Nahila is a part of the soul. In the Lakota Star Knowledge teaches us that the soul has four parts. One part belongs to the earth, and you get that when when uh, your mother gets pregnant. Yeah, as soon as she conceives, as soon as the sperm merges with the egg, that's when the mother earth puts a piece of her soul into that baby. So that's one piece that always stays on the earth. When this person dies, that goes back to the earth. Yeah, that that soul piece goes back to the earth. But when he's alive, that he or she is alive, that soul piece is inside the body. Okay, that comes from the earth. All right, that's one piece. The second piece allows you to be in this part of the universe. Yeah, so you get that when you come to this part of the universe. You get that second piece. All right. And the two remaining pieces are always together. Yeah, the two remaining pieces are always together. One is a sacred piece. And it will just say it's it's the universe piece, okay? And then the remaining part is you. That's your piece, your individual piece. So when a baby is born, as soon as it takes its first breath, that soul enters that child with those three pieces. Remember, the baby already has a soul piece from the earth. And then what enters that child has three more pieces. That's uh, you, a galaxy piece, and a universe piece. They join up together. Yeah? So as long as you're living on the earth, your your soul has four pieces and they connect to each other. And when the person dies, like I said, the earth piece returns to the earth. And then the soul travels to a certain star constellation and with three pieces. And then, when it gets there, it drops off one piece, the galaxy piece. We are in the Milky Way galaxy, so we could say it drops off that piece. So then, it, in, inside this dark constellation, there's a passageway that leads to towards the center of the universe. Now, when it gets there, there's something that happens. Remember, it has two pieces at this time. It has the universe piece and your piece what makes you you all right now the universe piece has the fullness of energy your piece is still developing so there's a place you go to where you meet the lady and she looks at these two pieces and if they do not have the same energy level then you turn around and you come back the same way you came you come through that same passageway and you come out of that same constellation, that star constellation that you went to after you died, I mean your last life. You come to that constellation and then you wait for the next baby to be born on the earth. And then you go into that child. So as you're going into that child, on your way there, you get that third piece back. You get that galaxy piece back that allows you to travel in this galaxy. Then when the baby takes its first breath, then you join the earth piece that's inside that baby. So it, you see that cycle? It keeps going over and over and over. This is a Lakota star knowledge reincarnation cycle. Some cultures, in their reincarnation, they will say, look, you see somebody who was born without arms, some religions will say, well, he must have did something really bad in his last lifetime. So he's being cursed in this one. Lakota Star Knowledge does not teach that. Lakota Star Knowledge says things happen in nature that just happen. There's no, some, sometimes there's just no rhyme or reason for it. It just happens. It might be a difficulty. and It, it might be a good thing. They just happen out of the blue. So, we don't have this karma punishing you if you do something bad. We don't have that concept. The soul, in Lakota Star Knowledge, the soul does not have the personality of the body it left. 
and it does not have emotions, and it does not have a voice. Because you need a physical body to produce sound. You need a physical body to produce emotions. And you need the human brain to produce a personality. So when the soul leaves the body at death, the personality stays with the brain. The emotions stay with the body, and that's going to convert into some kind of energy. So the voice also stays with the body too. You cannot do that without a body. So the soul is something different. It does not have a shape. It's not shaped like we are. And it can't talk because you need a physical body to do that, to produce sound. So that's what Lakota Star Knowledge teaches. So the Lakota Star Knowledge description of the soul is different than what the churches believe. See, most of us are influenced by churches. So when we see when we hear the word soul or spirit, we we automatically think of you know uh, a human form and that it can talk and and that it can show emotion. That's Christian influence. Okay? But Lakota Star Knowledge says that only with the physical body can you make sound. Only with the human brain can you make a personality. And only with the voice box can you make a voice. The emotions stay with the body too. So the soul is an energy. And it comes here to develop so that it eventually it will match the same level of intensity as that universe piece. You're always with that universe piece. So to sum it up, when a person dies, the earth soul piece returns to the earth. And then with the three remaining pieces, that soul travels to the certain constellation where it leaves off the galaxy piece that allows you to travel in this part of the universe. So now it just has those two pieces. And it goes through a passageway in this star constellation. And at the end of that passageway is a woman. And she looks at these two pieces because she can see the level. And then she, if they match, you you can go by. And then that's a different story after that. Okay. But if they do not match, you have to turn around. So you come back the same way. You come to that constellation again. And as soon as you uh, you know you, you find a baby to come into, when it's gonna, it's about ready to be born, then you're given that galaxy piece so that you can enter this part of the universe. When that baby is born and takes its first breath, then your soul goes into that child and connects with the earth piece that's in that child. Remember when, as soon as a woman gets pregnant. Earth gives a piece of her soul to this, to that child, the unborn child. So it always does this over and over. Yeah, that's why I say we always come back. And that's why in Lakota language, there's no word for goodbye. Instead, we say until next time. Yeah, which is toksha ake. Normally, I say that at the end, <laughs> but I'm not done yet, so I'm just explaining. So the soul is this coming here to develop. Yeah? And like I said, the personality is created by the brain. So when a, a, a lady is pregnant, and she's, as soon as she finds out she's pregnant, in our way, we start talking to the the, the baby. Yeah? So it gets used to our voices, and, and we, we, we have family with us all the time. So the baby is feeling this love, yeah? this family love, and if it has brothers and sisters, they come and talk to it, and they sing songs. The mother sings songs, and you know stuff like that. And see, it's 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 starting the emotional attachment. It's starting the development of emotions in that child. And it has a brain, so the personality is going to be forming too, based on these these experiences. And it has a soul piece from the grandmother Earth. And it has a physical body. So it has four parts of the self, technically. yeah, The physical body, the mind, uh, the emotions, and a soul piece from the earth. So 
So it is complete in a way. Yeah? And like I said, when it's born, it takes its first breath, and then this other three pieces come in. So it doesn't matter. The soul pieces, they don't choose to be born into a certain race, because remember, the soul is more concerned about the sacred center, and that has no race. It has no skin color. It has no language. So when a soul is choosing where to be born, it's not saying, oh, I'm going to wait till that rich person has a baby, then I'm going to go there. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's material thinking. Yeah, That's being materialistic, and that comes from duality. The soul's not thinking like that. A soul is just looking for a body to come into when the baby is born. And whatever the situation is, the whole clue here is to try to make the most of it, even if it's just very little. Because, you know, in some societies, if you're born a girl, you're you're basically doomed. You just have to somehow try to make the best of it. Yeah? Somehow. And that somehow is in your mind. It's in your mind and your dreams. Nobody can take that from you. So you still can do something. And reality begins within. So if you pay attention to your dreams and you do things like meditate and pray and whatever, that's influencing your reality. Like I said, it doesn't matter what kind of situation you come into. What matters is how do you live your life. That's what matters the most over anything. So... The, the soul is not concerned about being a Reiki master or a healer, you know. That's linear thinking to think like that, and that violates nature. The soul is coming here to live and to learn and to love. Nothing more. It's not coming here to be rich. It's not coming here to be a dictator. So it comes to develop. And so that's how that happens. So sometimes, especially among children, they get so caught up in their play that the nagila may wander off from their soul. So it's a tradition long time ago that when you're done playing for the day and your mom's telling you, come home now, yeah, she's she's going to call your name and come home now. She's going to say, it's time to come home, she's going to say. So you say, okay. So you come running in and you, and then you stand beside your mom and you do the same thing. Yeah, You're calling yourself. So for me, I would come, if I was a little boy back then, then I would come, you know, I would tell my mom, okay, mom, I'm coming. Then I come home, then I stand, my mom is still calling my name, yeah? And so I'll stand beside my mom in the doorway, and I'll be saying, David, it's time to come home. Come home now, David. It's time to come home. I say that over and over for a few more minutes. So I'm calling myself. How come? Because... I'm a little boy, and I'm really, really playful, you know, and my nagila may separate. So I'm what I'm not doing is I'm calling my nagila back home. So it, it, if if it's separated, then it will hear it, yeah, being called home. So then it comes comes back, and jumps back inside me again. <laughs> That's our tradition. That's what helps us to be to be sane, to be healthy. That's sometimes we have to do that. Now, sometimes people experience something incredibly traumatic. It could be war. It could be domestic violence. It could be a horrible racist act, attack. Whatever, it's something really overwhelming and it just overwhelms us so much that our nahila separates so we have to call it back otherwise we're going to be going around 
always wondering what's wrong. No matter what you do, it seems like something is missing. Something don't feel complete. It's your body telling you your narila is gone. So then you have to, you know, some people will go to a holy person, they'll, they'll tell them, I think my narila is gone. So the holy person will look at you and he'll kind of scan you. And they'll say, okay, let's call it back. So he'll, there, there's a little ceremony they do for that. You have to call the narila back, but it involves calling your name. That you call yourself. So you can go in your room and just call yourself home. Bob, come home. Yeah, if your name is Bob. If you have a nickname, use that nickname and call yourself home. Your Nahila will follow. That's what they did to the guys in World War One. Yeah, the Lakota guys that went and fought in World War One that survived and made it back. They took a lot of them into a ceremony and they had them all call their Nahila back. So it's not trapped anywhere else. So they dealt with war better than, or more healthier than, say, the Vietnam people. The Viet- people who went and fought in the Vietnam War. Because the tradition was fading. Yeah, not many people do this anymore. This is something I think should be done on the reservations um, for the suicide epidemic that's happening. I'm not kidding. There's at least one or two every week on a lot of reservations. It's, 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 I never heard this. I totally unheard of for me. It's, it's so shocking. And I think in part of the community healing process and that you know that the, this should be brought back, calling Nahila back. That they should have a ceremony for that, in which they have all the young people there. You know, in some place, and then everyone comes up to the center, one at a time, call their name. And then everybody else will say the same thing. Yeah, they all call that person's name too. And they all do that for each other. I think that's what they should do. And then that's going to show they're working together to call each other's Nahila back. And that's going to bond them to each other. And if they keep doing this every week, they'll slowly return to that community way of thinking that our ancestors had. So anybody out there listening from the res, shoot that idea to your your grandparents. See what they think. I really think that should start happening because that that we're living like like we lost our nahilas and maybe that's the reason why. It's because we did. 